what i'm about to share with you on this video is something i've had on my mind for over seven good years there are many types of addiction aren't there substance misuse behavioral emotional we'll work out all the different types later this behavioral addiction gambling is something i've been blessed to not have been attached to <laughs> Some of you know it, some of you have seen it being promoted in different ways and there are different platforms right now trooping into Africa, being very domiciled in Nigeria that are into this practice. Stop gambling. Gambling is an addiction though. I was thinking about it earlier today and apparently it gives you the ability to live in your imagination to, to sort of metastasize different emotions hope reaching the realization of something disappointment i suppose hormonally it's stimulating adrenaline like the anticipation that i really identify with with my previous addictions notably around getting drugs and my addiction around sex i remember the sense of between making the decision, I'm going to use drugs and then getting drugs, there being a kind of fearful euphoria. And I suspect that gambling as a behavioural addiction has a lot of that, that when you're making a decision to bet, when you're waiting the outcome of a bet, that you feel that you live in some suspended state. The reason why I'm talking about this particular subject right now is that it is causing a little bit more harm than good to the society. One of my friends first kind of come see, ah, see this thing, what could you play and go? I'll be like, listen this on you talk. But when you come win money, you come come see, ah, oh, I don't win money, I go, ah, show us as you play and go. You can show, you can show me as I play and So since that time, I don't play and So, Kabe, think about that, so I need primary school, we go be our primary five. He your young man play, so Kabe. That is the middle thing, Taya. So when you want to Jani, show me, I want to be Minera, this kid. So, Jogo Mokolo, or my mom, so we play, can try to play Moko, more, 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 play, go back, more, pleasure, more, lose me, me, winning. I can't know more. So, the next step now that they've brought now is gambling. And I tell young people how gambling is rigged. How gambling is set up against our own very existence as African people. How now rich people, they use sense for poor people. To gather money from plenty of poor people, send up to rich people. It's just a criminal act, really. But you are now the loser. You are the victim. So I say, ah, instead of you being the victim, go and do yahoo yahoo. Because this one, you are the victim. So if you have chosen to already destroy your life, Instead of destroying your life like this, go on. They say Shion is encouraging Yahoo Yahoo. Where is the logic in that? First of all, all I did was a comparative analysis between Yahoo Yahoo and gambling. I said, oh, instead of becoming an addict, because gambling is an addiction. Gambling is an addiction. Between being a gambler and being a fraudster, which of them is a lesser devil? I would say both of them are higher devils. Now recently they had, there was a trend on Instagram where Sheon Kuti was quoted to have, according to blogs, that he was promoting being a froster or like we know it in Nigeria, being a Yahoo boy. But he was comparing the idea of which of them is better. Because I've been someone that I grew up in an environment where my friends were people that were really, really into this, it was more of like a practice, it was more of like a hobby when it comes to betting. That's 2010, what is it? At least. Oh, my God, I'm going to take the leg to buy it with 5,000. There's a guy three days ago, he asked him that he collect a loan of 600,000 that he want to do every day. So, he come to spot betting, he spend the money, everything there. He later collect another money, which is 750,000 Naira. He came, come back to spot betting, and the game, and this, uh, they collect the money, uh, this, the game collect the money from him. That's in 2013. 
any motivation. He bet. So I did my lobby eight years, right? I'll be coming to you today. So I took eight years, seven years. See, my main team, okay, you want to look at that, be a mini iPhone. They call your PC. Betting company to one who can buy one can you buy? I mean, me get your bill me. What no money? They call your phone company. Ita, you buy the bill in cash. What you want to buy cash? Lo, I'm going to look at that. Yeah, to myself, lo, I'm going to buy it. Oh, go to my pa. I be most of one. Eh, you want? But if you want, they will go be. If you come, if you come here, will go be. We want to buy that. We want to buy that. They be. We go to the pa. We want to buy. We want to buy that. Elle le met au sol, elle le met au maximum pour faire quoi? Kilo son au débit, c'est chez Ayeni. Elle le met tout au cours de cette tasse en bois, tout au cours de cette tasse en bois. On le met déjà en jersey noir. I never really understood the psychology of it because maybe the way my parents raised me, I wasn't someone that was always handed money. So I grew up in a very uptight environment where I had training, had a lot of discipline, and to a great extent, it formed and shaped my mind how I grew up. You might be surprised, I really have few friends because, of course, it's very, very uneasy for someone to influence me to a particular lifestyle. So I came across this video, of course, on YouTube as a YouTuber by Ayo Adams, interviewing people that were into the habit of gambling, which I'll call an addiction. <laughs> To you, or to be a paper only, the Bema was a way. Still, or to not see it, it's a tiny jet out of us in the last week. Old Bashetan, Pentani, Old Bashan, a bear be twenty twenty thousand, and you cannot say Bashetan for me twenty five K. Oh, when you are wife for five thousand, or the battle by Shayetan, what you lost, what you got material to be massacre, or the coin you lost, you bet. Oh, smoke bow in your tongue. The battle smoke bow in your tongue, all land there for lower. After if we were able to cultivate some distance between the impulse to act out on addiction, in this case gambling, and the behaviour itself, if we could, when we feel, oh, I'm going to gamble, if we in that moment are able to witness the impulse, this is cannot be done alone in my experience. You have to have connections with other people who have been through it. Go right, yeah, now come on, we know the outcome of gambling, you know the cost to you financially, emotionally, the devastation it's caused your family. Essentially, you have to have a program. This is the format. You have to want to stop, you have to believe it's possible to stop, you have to ask for help to stop. There are other things, but that's the simple beginning. But what I want you to mostly understand is that the thing you think you will get from gambling, you cannot get. The same as the thing you think you will get through food, sex, drugs, consuming, you will not get. That is becoming more of, right now, a familiar spirit. When I, say, when I say familiar spirit, I mean spirits that might actually be tied to families right now, whereby <laughs> it's going to be a generational problem. Couple from my area, one 14 year old boy has been gambling every day, don't lose money, tire. He can't go win. I can't go win. I'm going collect him money where he win. That is the color see the boy now under age. Tell us if he pay our money. Then the boy head blue. <laughs> so you see those kind of dangerous act. That's just that's just evil. You've been collecting the poor boy's money. He's addicted to your age. Now he now even got that win that he has been looking for. Now that day now remember saying he now under age. All the day we know they lose uncle. At that moment you're supposed to return him money. All the money we don't lose to that. But nothing like that happened. They chased him out, everything. The boy, they cried for the boy. I don't put him out because it's not my business. I'm not going to encourage him in any way, sort of form. He has to learn his lesson. That's a life lesson for him there. You know, but at the same time, you know me say, I don't know the game with these gambling houses. They play. You know, so what may I did share with African people, now a way for us not to fall for the gimmicks. We will destroy us. We will weaken us. Everybody's online selling gambling. Gamble this, hey, favorite odd, this one, that one. Nobody's talking to young people about the dangers of gambling, about the addictive nature of gambling. Go online, see when you hold your phone, not going to look all this distraction. 
If you like gambling, go and learn about gambling. You will see it's an addiction that kills a lot of people. Look at the rate of suicide and depression in Nigeria. Our country wouldn't they see suicide before. I can tell you categorically, now as gambling done the right, all this gambling everywhere, you look everywhere, suicide and depression is increasing. All these things are connected, but nobody's doing the research on behalf of the people to create the care when it will lead to those extremes. Ah, me, in my life, I've, I'll never gamble. I don't gamble. Ask my friends. All my friends don't know me. Will tell you, I ne never, ever, I don't, not even kalu kalu. In my grown life, when I day young, go roll dice for secondary school, play what? But in my grown professional life, since maybe I've, I've been 20, since I've maybe turned 21, since I was 21, since I go to university, I've never, I've never believed in the art of doubling money. Anything doubling money to me is criminal. What I've noticed is um, um, they do come and they, most of the time they, they, they assume that they are being sent by elderly people. Um, they, when we ask them or interrogate them about it, they, they tend to tell us that they are being sent by their relatives or someone elder than them. And we have no other choice but to play the game for them since they are being identified by um, other people that are being sent by them. I don't win money before, I don't win money before, but the one we didn't win me, I win plenty fast. Some people's minds have been psyched into this, that people as young as 14, 15 are making this a lifestyle. Imagine if these people can leave this character when they get older. When they get older, they play soccer with me. When they play soccer with me, but I think this is I feel it. I don't know if you can play soccer with me, come on, play. I don't play a dance at the one junior. Oh, one junior, you know. I don't play soccer betting. Who and Bill? Now, Sarah Reporters made a story of this about three years ago, interviewing young people who were talking about their addiction to gambling and why they would never stop. So, think about that for a moment. If you have watched this couple of videos right now, and some of you might be into this actually yourself, of course, sometimes you get to win but it is actually programmed for you to lose because when you lose is when they get to make money. Why would you want to have build this particular person in your life and in your mind that is going to lead you into more other activities or more other crimes if possible just for you to keep up with that particular addiction? People might be addicted to drugs, addicted to a lot of different things, but when it comes to that of gambling, I think to a great extent the pattern it forms in your mind is such that it can damage your life for actually a long time, whereby money comes into your hand instead of you thinking of an investment because of that impatience you might have or because of that hurriness to actually make it like this, you put the money into gambling and the next thing you lose it. Last time the news was all over about um, Drake himself who got to lose money with regards to I think the Barcelona match or something. But don't let these people, if, but yes still I will tell you most of these comedians, most of these influencers are the ones that throw this at your face. Come on, you know the names of the brands that they throw at your face. I wouldn't come here to mention brands because that is not my goal right here. The goal here is, even though of course the influencers will get to make their money for influencing this to you, this character they are promoting to you, this addiction they are promoting to you, do you think it's actually worth putting your life into, that in the long run it becomes a pattern in your life, your son grows up to see you as a father, maybe as a mother as well, being into gambling and they see it as a way of life? In gambling, yes, sometimes you get to win, but most times you get to lose. But for the many times you get to lose, you always have the hope and the vision of winning. But you might keep losing along the way. Gambling is becoming a menace in the society today that is that to a great extent. I don't know if the way I look at the society right now, if we would ever, ever get over this particular lifestyle. It's very common. Most of the times I watch videos online, there's no, if I watch like 10 videos, at least two videos, you see a promotion of this particular lifestyle. The people themselves that are promoting this to you, do they engage themselves in this? One thing about forming thought patterns is that thought patterns over time becomes a part of you. 
some of you that have known me for a long time i'm very analytical by nature everything i see i question it everything i see i try to make sense out of it it's a thought pattern i can't change so it since it has become my regular lifestyle i bring that particular character in me i built over time from what i've been doing into content creation and commentaries i make about trending issues i think it's positive on my own side because with that i get to bring value to you but look at you on the other side if you are a parent if you're a young person right now becoming addicted to gambling how do you want to raise your children tomorrow in that particular lifestyle would you want them to go that particular route but trust me if i had said don't do yahoo yahoo go and gamble tomorrow by tomorrow now one gambling company would have called me and said thank you they don't give me money i don't do gambling advert and hey, have you done your bet today man bet man tell me what your odds color but because i told you the truth gambling is crack bro it's like crack it's like you're taking crack you are destroying your life you are destroying your life go and look at it go and look at it where is that leap in statement coming from because they don't want you to know the truth they are afraid of the truth they don't want you to free yourself from all this nonsense